gets a hold of their heart. They get all lost in all of it there. The pop culture icons are called stars. And that was a stretch. Now they're called idols. Just blatantly called idols. Yeah. And you got folks who profess to be in love with Jesus Christ talking about who their idol, who their idol, yeah. who their idol is. Mm -hmm. And no thought given to what you just said. Amen. You're, you're supposed to keep idols away from yourself. Amen. Some folks get so caught up in that stuff after a while, they're just on fire with it. They're just consumed with it. Just blazing. Now, James chapter 1 verse 13 says, Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Now, friends, we need to understand the combustible nature of sin and the temptation to commit sin that is provided to us through the world. How it gets us. What happens? I mean, we're talking about, I don't want to catch on fire for the world. I hope that's your attitude tonight. I don't want to be on fire for the world. Amen. I want to be on fire for Jesus Christ. Amen. And folks, here is the living truth. You can't be on fire for both. Amen. You can't serve two masters. Your life can't be about something else and the Lord. He will always take back seat. doesn't matter what it is. If it's money, if it's accomplishment, if it's position, whatever it is. The Lord will take back seat when that becomes your life and you caught on fire about it. And the Lord, He doesn't take back seat. He's not worthy of your back seat. Amen. He should be up front. Amen. Life should always be about Him. The, the hook is sin. And the bait that's provided is provided by the world and what the world uses to hook us is spoken of in 1 John chapter 2. It says, love not the world. That's talking about your affections. That's talking about your choice. Where your eyes are focused at tonight. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world. Listen. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Again, the hook is sin. The bait that's provided is provided by the world. And the hook, that the thing that hooks us, the reason we go after the bait, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And if you're going to avoid getting on fire from the world, or for the world, and remain a brand plucked from the burning, you're going to have to understand the dangerous nature of the world. And that's just something I don't think most Christians consider. You know what Jesus said? He said, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, he goes on to say, you made a sorry bargain. That's right, man. Now what shall a profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? The implication right there is, is there's a trade-off. A man that falls in love with the world and pursues the world and wants what the world has to offer loses his soul. And that's what Jesus said. What have you got? If you got everything you were looking for from the world, if you got all the world, what have you got if it cost you your soul? Amen. It's a sorry bargain. Amen. I'll tell you one thing. This world is not going to appreciate a King James Bible thumping witness for Jesus Christ Amen. who's interested in them being saved and changing their life and warns people about hellfire and damnation and exposes the darkness of the world. This world, if you think the world's going to appreciate you because you're cool for Jesus, you know they come. Right. You're going to get out on limb. You're going to be different if you're going to be anything at all. You can't win the world being like the world. Right. Jesus talking about this. He said the world cannot hate you, but listen to what he said. Me it hateth. This is what Jesus said. What about the world, Brother Dilbert? Well, the Lord said the world hated him. That's what he said. He said me it hateth. Because I testify of it. And he said that the works thereof are evil. That's what your Lord said. Yeah. He said this world is evil. And I testify of it. Because I testify of it, it hates me. That's what he said. You know what he said? He said ye, talking about us, we're the light of the world. We're the light of the world. Now you know yourself. You know, I know myself. Amen. <laughs> we're the light. How dark is the world if you're the light of it? Yeah. Yeah. 
You understand? I mean, come on, let's be sober tonight. This world is dark. We're the light of the world. And Jesus said in John 14, he said, I'll pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, listen, whom the world cannot receive. They don't even know the spirit of God. They know nothing about him because it seeth them not, neither know of him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Christ said this world was evil. Knows nothing of the spirit of God. Said they can't even learn. That's what he said. John 15, 17, Jesus said, These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hate you, know that it hated me before it hated you. Understand that. Just to get a proper perspective of what we're looking for. If we're looking for the approval of the world, we're barking up the wrong tree. Amen. Jesus said, It's going to hate you if you do right. They ain't going to appreciate you banging on that Bible and talking about Jesus Christ. And all these gods they hold up for men to admire, you knocking them off the shelf and saying, next to Jesus, they're nothing. Amen. This world ain't going to appreciate that. Amen. They ain't going to appreciate that. They're going to hate you, Jesus said. But know this, it hated me first. <laughs> hated me before it hated you. And he says, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. See, that's, that's kind of the payoff. You want the world to brag on you? you got to be of the world. you got to be one just like them. I mean, if you want the world to applaud you and appreciate you and praise you, Jesus said you got to be of it. Right. He said if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, I've chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant's not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. If they've kept my saying, they'll keep yours also. Well, no better than the Lord Jesus Christ. And what the world thought of him, they're not going to think any more of us. And we shouldn't expect it. John 16, 33, Jesus said, These things I've spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. There's your refuge. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 19, Now we know that what things of the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every night may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. We're just talking about the world. The Lord says that He gave Himself to deliver us from this present evil world. We know what it's typified as in the book of Exodus. Egypt is a type of the world, and Israel being set free, that's what God did for us when He saved us. He liberated us from the world. I'm glad I'm not going to hell. But just equally, I have a desire not to be a part of this world. I want to be different. I don't want to be fired up for the world. I want to be fired up for Jesus Christ. Paul the Apostle said this. He said, it is written. He quotes the Old Testament. I'll destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. In this day and time, this world, they'll champion a beer-drinking pedophile. Mm -hmm. Drug addict, beer-drinking pedophile. And castigate and demonize a Bible-thumping preacher. Amen. That's this world's standards. I mean, uh, I mean, the things they'll do to, to Christians and what they'll say about Christians and Christian values and those kind of things. I mean, just recently you had a guy that they, the media misquoted. And then they went and said, what he said didn't check out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they were quoting what they said he said. He had to go back and say, I didn't say that. You said that. Yeah. But this, this man, this brother, talking about his standards, talking about his faith, they went after him. That's what the world does. They have to throw mud at every Christian they hear about. They have to tear him down. They have to tear down his testimony. At the same time, Woody Allen is a champion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Woody Allen married his own kids. Yeah. You understand? Oh, he's so funny. He's a pedophile. Yeah. He's an incestuous pedophile. Yeah. You understand? But that's one of the world's gods. Yeah. They don't care about morals. Man. They just despise Christ. Amen. They despise the Word of God. Yeah. They despise you if you stand up for Jesus Christ. And if you stand on the Bible, folks, that's the truth. Amen. That may not be what you came to church on Sunday night to hear, but <laughs> no one showed me the hoops I was supposed to jump through tonight. 
We're not entertaining anybody. We're trying to give you a heads up. You're going to be on fire for something. You're going to be passionate for something. And I'm saying don't be passionate for the world. The Bible says about the world, he says that the world by wisdom knew not God. Oh, the champions of the world, boy, they're so smart. They're so brilliant. They don't know God and all their studies. They miss him. They can't get a hold of the truth of God. The Bible reminds us, saying, You let the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. That's used to be. According to the prince of the power of the air, the devil, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's where we used to be. Now, he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's no way to dress it up. This world is no friend of Jesus Christ. And therefore, shouldn't be a friend of ours. James chapter 4, verse 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. He says there's a big tug of war taking place, and if you're pulling on the same end of the road that the world's pulling on, you're pulling against the Lord. Amen. You're an adversary. You're opposing truth. That's pretty plain. 1 John chapter 4 says, You're of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. The world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. I mean, he's talking about discernment there. I mean, everybody's like, well, how can you know? They're just guessing, feeling their way through life. Every Christian needs discernment. Here's what you ought to know. Anybody that speaks of the world and defends the world and they're in favor of the world, takes the world's position against the position of God's word, God's son, and God's people, they're, they're out there. You, you, just, you just need to know that. The natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. So you can waste your life being passionate for this world, trying to gain this world's approval. As long as you're on the same end of the rope Jesus Christ is pulling on, you're never going to have it. You're pulling against them. And the only way, the only way you're going to get the world's applause and approval is to switch sides. And in the last days, he talks about many traitors. There's some pulling on the wrong end of the rope because they're humanists, because they're liberals. They're for murder. Mm -hmm. They're for abortion. Amen. Because they're caught up in a political argument, they're bound and determined to win. And they'll just take all their convictions and Bible truths and they'll throw it over their shoulder and say, but this is what my party believes. Amen. 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 <sighs> Big deal. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Bible says we can do nothing against the truth Amen. but for the truth. Amen. And that's the truth. The Bible says this, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. A little bit later in the same chapter, he says, And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. <laughs> Folks, nobody's dressing this up. Nobody's adding to it. We're just telling you what the Word says about the world. Amen. We've been delivered from it. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That's what God done for us in his grace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were fireproof. Again, they couldn't get them to burn them. They tried, but they just wouldn't burn. The flames didn't touch them, even though they're in the midst of the fiery furnace. Even though there were others around them far more mighty than they were, even though they had all that outer clothing that was very flammable, those garments, amen, you and I were in this world, and we got this flesh, and in all likelihood, unless the Lord does something, we're going to catch. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. You understand that? We yeah. need deliverance. Yeah. We need some help. And the context here shows us what these men were. They were dependable men. They were dependable. That means they were consistent and constant. They were faithful. Amen. They didn't just up and decide one day, we're going to take this stand. This is the character of these men. They were planted. Amen. They, they, they didn't catch fire uh, in, in this regard. And just like you and I, we're not going to catch fire if we're just determined to get rooted. 
and get planted. Quit being up one day and down the next day. Get planted, get rooted, amen? Dry dead wood burns. Stout.